And that also makes me think of the places that students would go to to receive support. Right? So we know that there are many universities um, have become better equipped to serve various students based on their marginalized experiences. So at least that's being acknowledged. So there's uh, multicultural affairs offices, which traditionally uh, focus on race and ethnicity issues. There are women and gender uh, studies programs or offices that, again, are for women or people who might not identify um, as cisgendered men. Um, there are LGBTQ student services offices, right, that are, mm -hmm. off, that are often supporting um, students with diverse sexual orientation and gender identity needs. Um, disability support services offices, uh, veterans, mm -hmm. um, people that come from low-income first-gen backgrounds, there's those kinds of programs. So there's a, there's a good deal of programs that uh, exist on many of our campuses and are serving students in a very effective way, but maybe not quite effective, as effective as if they uh, um, kind of um, integrated more so and, uh, and operated from an intersectional framework. And so if I'm a student of color who also happens to be a woman, who also happens to be first generation and poor, who also has learning difficulties that might be tracked on to maybe a learning uh, disability, uh, where do I go? Mm -hmm. And am I going to be able to be seen fully for who I am at each of those offices? And the answer that I'm hearing from students that I work with is no. That I go to the disability support services office and they tend to treat me as if my disability is the only thing that mm -hmm. is functioning or that is having an impact on my ability to um, uh, engage with my studies in an appropriate way, right? Or, yeah. or in a way that is that is that is fruitful. And they don't see how my, my race and my racial experiences on campus are also adding to that. Mm -hmm. or my gender or my sexual orientation. Mm -hmm.